In this video, we are going to see about the different types of synchronous motor. Let us see the construction of synchronous motor. Like any other machine, this synchronous motor also has stator and rotor. The stator carries the armature winding or the stator winding and we have to give a three phase AC supply to the stator. When this three phase AC supply is given to the armature winding, it will produce a rotating magnetic field. If you see the rotor, the rotor here it is shown as salient pole rotor. The rotor carries the field winding and we have to give the DC supply for the field winding. This is called DC excitation. This DC excitation will produce a field magnetic field. There are different types of synchronous motor. First one is called the wound field synchronous motor. In this there are two types. One is called the cylindrical rotor and another one is salient pole rotor. That is the rotor will be different in these two types. Next we have permanent magnet synchronous motor, synchronous reluctance motor and hysteresis synchronous motor. Let us see each type of motor. Wound field synchronous motor are of two types. First one is the cylindrical rotor wound field motor. So in cylindrical rotor type you can see that here the air gap is uniform. First thing the rotor is cylindrical in shape and the air gap is uniform. So they have a higher mechanical strength. So this type of rotor is preferred for high power and high speed applications. Next type is salient pole wound field motor. We can see the rotor has salient poles. Salient means projecting. So this has salient poles. So here the air gap is not uniform. So it doesn't have that mechanical strength. So it is preferred for low speed applications and it is comparatively cheaper We will analyze the cylindrical rotor wound field motor. Let us take the simplified equivalent circuit. So here V is the applied voltage and XS is the synchronous reactance, IS is the stator current and E is the excitation EMF. Here the angle for supply voltage is taken as 0 degree. So with respect to this voltage E will be lagging behind by some angle tell. So the input to the motor. So what is the formula for uh, power? This is a AC circuit. So it should be VI cos phi. So the power input power is equal to 3V into input current IS into cos phi where phi is the phased angle between IS and V. Now we will assume that there are no stator losses. So the power developed is also equal to 3V IS into cos phi. Now we will find what is IS from this equivalent circuit. So IS is equal to V minus this voltage divided by XS. So what is the angle for V? 0 degree. For E it is minus del divided by here XS you have to write it as J into XS. What is the angle of J? Minus 90 degree. So we can simplify it like this V by XS angle of minus 90 degree minus E by XS minus of this 90 degree plus del. So we got what is IS but we want IS into cos phi. 
So let us find what is IAS cos phi, multiply by cos phi and simplify it, you will get this equation. So this cos 90 is 0. So IS cos phi is equal to E by XS into sin del. So we got what is IS cos phi. So power is equal to, power developed is equal to 3V into instead of IS cos phi, I am writing it as E by XS into sin del. So the stator rotating field will always rotate at synchronous speed. Ns is equal to 120 F by P. So let us find what is omega S. So omega is 2 pi N divided by 60. So from that we can find what is omega S 4 pi F by P. So this is synchronous speed. Now we are finding what is this um, motor speed that will be omega s into 1 minus s but here this is a synchronous motor we know in synchronous motor always the motor runs at synchronous speed so at synchronous speed s is equal to 0 so we can write here if s is equal to 0 omega m is will be equal to omega s So torque equation we can write it as torque is equal to Pm by omega m. What is Pm? This is the equation we have derived divided by omega m or you can write it as omega s. So for a given field excitation if DC field excitation is constant we can write torque is directly proportional to sin del. So, this del angle is called power angle or torque angle. So, if we plot the graph between the torque and the torque angle, as you increase the torque angle, the torque increases till 90 degree. So, the torque reaches its maximum value when del is equal to 90 degree. And after 90 degree, if you increase the torque angle, torque starts to decrease. So this region is said to be unstable region. It is always desirable to operate in this region 0 to 90 degree. So this region is said to be the motoring mode. Similarly, we can change the angle and uh, if you plot the graph, you will get the characteristics here. So this is said to be braking mode or regenerative braking mode. Now let us see the speed torque characteristics. So this is the torque equation. So this is a synchronous motor. So for constant speed application, speed is constant. So your characteristics will be like this. It is a constant line. So here you will get the motoring mode and for negative torque you will get the braking mode. Next we will see how by varying the field excitation we can vary the power factor. Because synchronous motor can operate at different power factors. By varying the DC excitation we can vary the power factor. So let us see the lagging power factor first. So this is the applied voltage. For lagging power factor, current should lag the voltage by some angle phi. So let us take the current as IES and this angle is phi. So current is lagging the voltage by angle phi. Now for at 90 degree to this IES, draw a line from V. So actually this IS and IS axis are perpendicular. So at 90 degree we are drawing this line for this particular magnitude IS into axis. So if you join from this point to this point you will get the E or the excitation E for which you will get the lagging power factor. So del is the angle between V and E. So this 
you can get from the equivalent circuit we have seen. Next we will see for unity power factor. So unity power factor voltage and current will be in phase. So this phase angle phi will be equal to 0. Now at 90 degree you have to draw this Is into Xs. So Is Xs you draw it at 90 degree and join these two you will get the excitation E. So this angle is the del. And for leading power factor V will be here and I should lead the voltage by angle phi. So I is here. So where will be Is into Xs? It will be at 90 degree to this one. So you can draw it here Is into Xs. So this will be the E for leading power factor. So for different power factors you can see E value changes. So by varying the E you can achieve different power factor. Next we will see the second type permanent magnet synchronous motor. Here the rotor is a permanent magnet. Earlier in uh, wound field motor we saw that there will be field coil around the stator. So here there will be no field coil instead a permanent magnet is used. So here no field copper loss as there is no coil. So they have a higher efficiency and because of permanent magnet you will have high power density and low rotor inertia and they have a robust construction and it is suitable only for medium and small size motor. The drawbacks are it is not possible to achieve field control because it is a permanent magnet and you cannot control the power factor and due to aging a demagnetization may occur and this uh, Permanent magnet is comparatively costlier compared to the field windings. Next we will have synchronous reluctance motor. So we have seen about salient pole motor. In salient pole motor we have a field winding across the rotor terminals to which field excitation will be connected. But this synchronous reluctance motor is similar to salient pole motor except that you don't have a field winding. So when there is no field winding there is no use of field voltage also. So there is no excitation voltage E is equal to 0. So how it works? When you give the three phase AC supply to the stator terminals a rotating magnetic field will be produced like a induction motor. How this rotor rotates it depends upon the reluctance principle. So if you see the construction of this rotor some, po some points are projecting some are not projecting. So here the reluctance is different in this position to this position if you see there will be a variation in the reluctance. So here as the rotor rotates the reluctance um, value also changes. So the reluctance is a function of the relative position of the rotor. This is the construction of the synchronous reluctance motor. We can see that along the Q axis the flux lines are abstracted whereas along the D axis the flux lines are not abstracted. This causes the variation in the reluctance. So this reluctance motor produces the torque based on the uh, tendency of this rotor to occupy always a minimum reluctance position. So as the stator field is rotating the rotor also will rotate such that always it moves towards the minimum reluctance position. It is advantage that uh, there is no field winding and field excitation. So it may appear that it is cheaper but there are some drawbacks, poor power factor 
and poor efficiency which makes them unsuitable for high power applications. So normally it is preferred for low power drives where constant speed is required. Next we have hysteresis synchronous motor which is based on this hysteresis principle. So we know what is a hysteresis loop which is drawn between the flux density and magnetizing force. So when you increase the force it will follow on path while uh, decreasing it will not follow the same path that is the flux density will lag behind the magnetizing force. So this is the structure of a hysteresis motor we have the stator and rotor so the rotor will be made up of magnetic material that will has high hysteresis loss. So the rotor will be cylindrical in shape and it is provided with high resistance to reduce the eddy current loss. So while starting it will act like a induction motor and under running condition it will act like a synchronous motor. So starting uh, the voltage will be induced in the rotor by stator magnetic field at synchronous speed the stator pulls in the rotor into synchronism. So this was earlier used in tape recorders but right now this motor does not have any or much application it, it is rarely used because of low efficiency, low torque and low power factor. And this is available only in very small size. So the points to remember here are uh, there are four types wound field synchronous motor, permanent magnet synchronous motors, synchronous reluctance motor and hysteresis synchronous motor. So out of which this cylindrical uh, rotor is widely used for high power application and salient pole is used for low power application. In some cases we use permanent magnet motors. If you like the material do subscribe to read electric vehicle channel. Thank you.